guest, Art Chad and Drag exclusive Israel Palestine podcast. Yeah, I'll be representing Israel, and Art Chad over here will be representing Palestine. We've been want- wanting to make this for a while. Uh, it's very important that we ma- that we do this video. I think it's the most important piece of media we'll ever produce. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so glad you've decided to join us for the Israel-Palestine conversation. Just Israel and Palestine, nothing else. What, I hope you're ready for 90 minutes straight of Middle East history. <laughs> so it all started 75 years ago when, the, um, when Israel started uh, um, being awesome. Being cringe. <laughs> so, and, uh, and then there was this thing called the Nakba. And that, the Nakba it means catastrophe mm. in Muslim. Yeah. Does it? I don't know what Nakba is. And uh, and 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 then at some point there was wars, and Israel expanded its borders because they were awesome. Jews are awesome. I'm not coming. I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna beat me with that one. Jews are awesome. Just objectively, I, I find myself uh, disproportionately attracted to Jewish women. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know what like. Well, I do know. I don't know. They're usually pretty cute and smart. Yeah. So I find like, I don't know. I'll see someone and I'll just be like immediately attracted to them and they'll be like, I'm Jewish. And I'm like, yeah, I knew, I knew it. Mm. I, 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 knew, I don't know why. It's because they're, uh, it's because of their minds. You're attracted to their minds. You're like a demisexual. Don't call me a demisexual. You're like a demisexual. Is that a th- thing? I know what, I know what demisexual means, but I, I hate there's a word for it. Why can't I just say that I'm like a romantic? Uh-huh. Why do I have to be like in the LGBT umbrella um, with like a special sexuality? I don't know. It's just a like labels have meaning insofar as they are useful to describe things. Why can't I be hopeless romantic? Well, you can be a hopeless romantic. Um, like Albert Camus would just like cry to Simone de Beauvoir and Jean Paul Sartre. Mm-hmm. He'd be like getting like all these women all the time and he'd just be like, God, oh, no one loves me. And he would be like, they'd find him like collapsed on the ground like crying at like 2 a.m. in the streets mm. of Paris all the time mm. and he would just like r- rant to them about his love life and how hopeless he was about romance mm. demisexual and he, and he was poly was he poly oh well, wasn't he dating Simone de, Ma- de Beauvoir and also other chicks Camus no no he wasn't going near Beauvoir he wasn't oh. he wasn't touching that oh. he was not tapping Beauvoir who was tapping Beauvoir <sighs> um her dude she was so, so her and Sartre were fucking. Oh, Sartre. Uh, and, and Sartre thinks sex is icky. Uh-huh. And his whole philosophy, everything he does, everything centers on like sex being icky. If he didn't think sex was icky, like nothing he wrote would exist. It would all be radically different. But he thought sex was icky. Mm-hmm. He thought sex was like slimy and gross. Mm-hmm. So he stopped fucking Beauvoir, but still loved her. And then she started like fucking her students, mm-hmm. male and female. She was like 45 and her students were like 18. Mm-hmm. Um, 18 year old men and women. And then they all signed the abolish the age of consent act. They did the end. <laughs> they did. And, and then start smoked himself to death hmm. like a true Chad. Hmm. Smoke yourself to death. That's the ideal life. Sex is icky. <laughs> Lung cancer die. Yeah. <laughs> Sex is icky. Right. Uh, was it being in being into nothingness? Is that his main book? Is that I don't, his, I don't read is that his tome? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sartre's tome. I've never read a book in my life. It's the, like the Sartre book. There's like one book. That's like huge. It's like a thousand page book. Mm-hmm. Being into nothingness. Can you talk while I look that up? Let me make an anti centrist case for Israel and Jews. Um, the centrist position right now for Israel is basically Israel's part of the status quo. It supports US hegemony, so we should support it. Um, now, the anti centrist case is basically all pro Palestine. The far right is pro Palestine, far left is pro Palestine. Um, even like the, the, you know, moderate hard or hard left is pro-Palestine. Um, there's an interesting geopolitics horseshoe theory, the, the graph that's been going around on Twitter, and it kind of uh, sums it up pretty well. But the anti-centrist case is the racial spirit of the Jews is communist. And uh, so there you go. There's an anti-centrist case to be made for Israel. It's, it's, it's race-based, which is far right, but it's also... The, it's using that for far left ends, which is communism. And uh, it also fits well with all those conspiracy theories, um, but in a, in a kind of positive and affirming way. And I also think that this has really changed the sort of discourse as well around, uh, around Israel. Um, because, you know, the far right uh, used to be 
you know, I, I would say that uh, I'd say that the right has tried to it, it's become more of much more of a polarized issue. I suppose the left is just typically pro Palestine. The right is typically pro Israel now. Um, and it used to be, it used to be a little bit more complicated, but everything just kind of ends up polarizing into a two party system. If that's what you have. Well, right. Libertarians are pro Palestine because they're anti imperialism. Well, not, not anti imperialism. They're anti uh, subjugation. Uh, there's some right libertarians who are pro Israel. That doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to me that like the U S the, the motive being of the United States and the West is rebellion, right? Like mm-hmm. that's baked into like the, the, the country is built off of the most rebellious people who came over here, the people who wanted something more, like it had a spirit of adventure, right? Mm-hmm. That's like the country is built off that. And then it's built off rebelling against the British and re- revolution against the British, uh-huh. right? So the whole, like the, 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 the meta narrative of the West is, is rebellion and revolution, mm-hmm. right? So it makes no sense to me that like being people who make the argument that being pro-Israel is like, it makes no sense to be pro-Palestine. If you're in the U S you should be pro-Israel. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense to me at all. It makes sense. Like it makes more sense. You would be pro-Palestine because, because the West is built off of non-subjugation. Uh, but I mean, I guess the, if the West is supporting its own interests, it makes sense to be pro-Israel. As Joe Biden said, if there was no Israel, they'd have to create a Israel just to, just to represent their interests. Like through Israel, uh, U S can like bomb other middle Eastern countries indirectly. And like assert their dominance in that way. Why don't we make more Middle Eastern friends? Like Lebanon. I love Lebanon. <laughs> I love the Lebanese. We love the Lebanese folks. I love the Lebanese. Always have, always will. Well, you got to pick. I mean, it's like, can't be friends with the Jews and the Lebanese. Jordanians. Jordanians. Most of those people are Palestinians who have been. I know. I love, I love Jordanians. Yeah, well, but have the Jordanians ever made vaccines? No, but I don't know. They're, they're Losers. Cool. They're pretty cool over there. Losers. <laughs> What do we, what do they got? Hummus? Yeah. Hummus is dope. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty big fan of hummus. They have hummus. They have just like just a general sense of togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can't betray my race here. Lebanese, Lebanese is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Lebanese is pretty good. Beirut, the Paris of the Middle East. I'm uh, related to the leader of Hezbollah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's last, uh, her maiden name is Nazarala and she's from the same place in Syria as the uh, leader of Hamas? No, sorry, not Hamas. Uh, Hezbollah. Um, I learned this recently, actually, because I just, you know, you learn something new every day. Look at you. The spirit, your, your meta narrative, your genetic meta narrative is rebellion. We've got Che Guevara. Che Guevara. We've got Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah. Yeah. Yeah. You're just doing crazy shit. Yeah. It's not, it's not even rebellion. It's just more like chaos. I mean, it depends how you want to look at it, I guess. But uh, the other case to be made for like, um, liber- like uh, the libertarian, there's kind of two strains of libertarianism. And one is just like uh, more of a Hoppian strain of like kind of you need to have um, a system in place that allows for libertarianism. And that might have to be authoritarian sometimes. It's what, a little bit contradictory. What's Hoppian? Ha, Hans, Her- uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe was a, is an Australia, Austrian um philosopher, narco-capitalist guy. Um, but he, he basically differs from other narco-capitalists by like kind of supporting the state in some instances where the state is cracking down on commies. Mm. So like they would support like Pinochet because Pinochet killed a bunch of communists and then allowed the free market to run. Um, it's weak. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't really strike you as a narco-capitalist. Not a, not a very principled narco-capitalism, but the idea is like to get to a narco-capitalism, we must first pass through a state of authoritarian right-wingism. So it's kind of like That's, playing the long game. All these people, all these extremists, they always have the same like, oh, before we get to the utopia, yeah. we have to kill everyone. Yeah. And it's like all the, the, the communists, everybody, they all say, they all have this like theory that we have to go through like 10 years of bullshit. Before we get to this utopia. And then you get caught up in the 10 years of bullshit and on the way the, there. And then that becomes a means to it. The, that becomes the end in and of itself. Same yeah. thing can be said for like state communism. Yeah. Like this, the an anarchist or like um, people who want to progress towards a stateless, classless, moneyless society uh, on the left libertarian front who support uh, authoritarian regimes to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes a, uh, it's a cope. I don't know. Cause I feel like it's a lot of people who think they wouldn't get caught up in their own power. It's people who think like, I guess that's the, that's the classic sort of like Jordan Peterson um, anti-authoritarian argument is that like everyone thinks that they're benevolent, right? Everyone, right. everyone thinks they wouldn't be Hitler or Stalin given the power of Hitler and Stalin. Yeah. But they would be. Most, like 99% of people will be. Yeah. If they're, if they're ideologically driven and 
if they get that much power, no one's going to like, there's very, very, very few people in history who haven't capitalized on that in some malevolent sense. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of uh, when someone's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be an artist, but first I need to make enough money to support myself. And so they like throw themselves into a job. And then 10 years later, they're like, well, they're not. Artists. What, what was that? What I was trying to do again. I forget it, but I'm making a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. I was thinking about that the other day at work. I was just getting obsessed with, uh, yeah, like, like seeing, making a sacrifice, making a sacrifice for a means to an end and then getting caught up in the means, right? Uh-huh. That is like what people who just end up chasing money their whole life do, is everyone thinks they're, it's the same thing, right? Everyone thinks they're going to get just the right amount of power in order to achieve something greater, that where power isn't the end in itself. But then you yeah. get caught up in the power because you don't if you're, if you're starting from a position of no power, you're starting from a position of not having money. Yeah. And then you get to a point where you're making a ton of money. Why would you like, why do you think you would have the wherewithal to see past that? Mm. Right. If you have nothing and then all of a sudden you're a millionaire, or you have nothing. All of a sudden you have like a, like a bunch of power. Yeah. If you enter if you enter American politics being like, I know how American politics works. I know how all these politicians get corrupted. I know how everyone has their hands in each other's pockets and I'm not going to be that. Mm-hmm. And you have no power. And then you get that power. You think you're not going to fall to that trap the yeah. way like literally everyone else does. Like what American politician is there who has relevance, who doesn't fall into that trap? Bernie even, Sanders and Donald Trump. I mean, even like AOC completely lost. AOC has nothing. I, yeah. lo- I, lo- I loved, I didn't agree with AOC, but I liked the fact that she was fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And now she's, total fucking status quo she has sold her soul and now no one gives a fuck about her this is why it's important to oppose centrism and status quoism as a kind of axiom so that when you go into stuff like that you know that you're like the 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 status quo will win and will convert you into being everybody else um if you give it enough time and uh yeah that's why you should be as uh, extreme as possible um i think she, I, the inverse of that is you should accept parts of the status quo to begin with. Right? Because if you think like, I know I want money. And I, part of me, like a big part of me wants money as a means to an end. And I know what the ends are. But I also want material wealth. Knowing that like, I would enjoy having material wealth. I'm not going to pretend like, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't buy a Rolex. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely buy a fucking Rolex. I would absolutely buy a sports car. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely buy a nice condo. Of course I would. Like to, to go into it denying you would ever participate in materialism and thinking that you're only ever going to use your money for good is just complete bullshit. You have to accept that you are going to lose part of yourself immediately. Mm-hmm. And that materialism, like materialism and like status shit isn't, isn't that bad because it's how the world operates, how the world always operates. Like capital is just the current manifestation of how materialism and status games present themselves. But it's like, 10,000 years ago, we, we had the same systems playing out. It just wasn't mm-hmm. money. It was something else. Mm-hmm. Well, you lost me when you said uh, to accept some parts of the status quo. But let's talk about you. You're blowing up recently. Let's talk about that. Blowing up recently. You've got what? Uh, you doubled your subscriber count over the last week? Yeah, going hit, to gonna hit 12K this week. Yeah, probably. you've been cracking away at this YouTube game for a couple of years, and now you're reaping the rewards. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's very true. As they say. Yeah. Whatever people say to keep themselves happy. Yeah, so you're headed towards that path of, uh, of success. Yeah. What are you going to do with your all, all that newfound power? All that newfound are you, power. Are you going to get lost in the sauce, or are you going to keep your values? I'm I, I'm going to keep my value. I know what my values are. Um, I will definitely like. I know, like with art specifically, I've always since I've started making art, I've always wanted to make art that like says something and alienates people, right? Because, like, to make art that doesn't alienate anybody is bad art. Yeah. Like, your art should be alienating to some people. Because if your art is meaningful, it's going to alienate some people. who either I mean, don't, in groups and out groups. Yeah, who either don't understand it or who either don't agree with it, right? The art that doesn't alienate people is the art that ends up in hotel lobbies, mm-hmm. right? That's the art that gets fucking bought and sold by rich people because it says nothing. It's, like, meaningless to own. Well, it alienates you, doesn't it? <laughs> I, yeah, but not in the same not in the same sense. It, it alienates me because it's meaning. Well, no, it alienates me because it's meaningless. Yeah, but meaning it's like a lack of meaning. There's an absence of something. Right. Right. It's an, ab- it's an absence of substance. So, I think like I'll always I always want my art to say something, and I always want like people to 
if someone were to buy my art in the future, I want them to like understand that like it's controversial, mm-hmm. that it represents my ideas, that it represents my worldview. And if they don't agree with that, like they, they, they shouldn't participate in it. Right. In the same way, like we talk about this a lot with subscribers, like you don't want your subscriber base, even if you're growing really, really fast. Like, let's say you make, let's say you're like not a political person and you don't identify with politics mm-hmm. and then you make like a lefty video mm-hmm. and you get like 50,000 left wing subscribers who mm-hmm. all think you're like a, like a left wing political YouTuber. Yeah. You don't want those subscribers long term. It's great short term. But you say this too, right? Like you don't want that long term because your audience thinks you're something that you're not. Yeah. And you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to pigeon your pigeonhole yourself into being something you're not. Like I don't want people to think I'm not very political uh-huh. in terms of like ideology. Like I, I don't call myself like a conservative or like a liberal. He's a Nazbol. <laughs> but I wouldn't want anyone to think I'm a liberal. I wouldn't want anyone to think I'm like a social justice. If I make a video about like, if I make a video that's like pro social justice because of like one specific thing I agree with, uh-huh. right? Like. I'm really passionate. I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, like indigenous rights. Right. right. So if you people hear that and then they think you're culturally left wing in general, like culturally far left. Yeah. So if someone subscribed to me like, oh, this guy made like an indigenous rights video, he must be pro like children getting hormone therapy. He must agree with everything I agree with because he touches on this one point I agree with. I don't uh-huh. want anyone to think that I am them or that I agree with or that they agree with everything I say. Uh-huh. Right. So you almost you, you want to kind of sort of quantify yourself early on. I don't, I'm trying, I'm trying yeah. to do right now. I don't want to, someone commented on a video, on my video, they were like, I'm not a liberal, but this video really made sense to me. And I'm like, I'm not a liberal. I, I'm, don't, <laughs> please don't think I'm a liberal. Like you're going to be, see, you're going to be very disappointed in me uh-huh. if you think I'm a liberal. I, 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 I only want to be, uh, I, first of all, I want my art to say something, but I don't know what, I don't, I don't want to know what it, what it says. Um, I want my art to say something in a language that I don't understand, or I want to say, I want my art to say something, but the art should just be uh, the ramblings of a schizophrenic and completely incomprehensible. And then I want to be able, I want to have the freedom to contradict myself three seconds later, because that's actually authentically how my mind works. Um, I also, uh, I also don't want to be anything, um, because I want to be everything, but then you still need to isolate someone by doing that. And the person you isolate is consistent people and people who make sense. Yeah. And people who don't have who don't have contradictions in their mind or think they don't have contradictions in their mind. Everyone has contradictions in their mind. Everyone's a big, messy pretzel. But you get yourself in a a community where people believe one thing and then you're not you don't actually have the freedom to think other thoughts. But should you should you I mean, even that kind of posits thinking about things coherently as a as a bad thing and maybe thinking about things coherently is a good thing. And now now I'm back back around in the pretzel. Back around the pretzel, just contradicting yourself. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think the contradicting yourself comes from a, a desire to not be held accountable for anything. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I, I think about this a lot as well. Like, um, the, the, the way kind of like kind of on topic of what you're saying, right? The way social media operates is that you are incentivized to pick things and stick with them and not be wrong or grow. Like mm-hmm. I'm the guy on social media who has this opinion, yeah. right? Who has, who holds X opinion and people know me as this person who holds this opinion. Yeah. And then you release that opinion into the wild and then you get uh, followers that reinforce your opinion and then you feel the need to go stronger and deeper into that opinion. Yeah. Like it would be detrimental to like Andrew Tate's career if he went back on something that was like, I don't know, like, oh, masturbation isn't that bad yeah, or something like that. And his audience would turn on him mm-hmm. or like part of his audience would turn on him. Right. Like you are, you are incentivized to basically like have tenants that you follow and have hard rules and have a list of opinions that you never waver on, uh-huh. which is, is not how humans work at all. Cause you grow and change and you, and your perspective changes. No one's a fucking, no one's that static. So contradicting yourself is like bad for uh, it's bad for business. So is apologizing. It's so fucking weird because that's not that's not the way w- the world works. At well, all. if you if you change your mind, then you're a grifter. I know it's so fucking <laughs> weird. You're not allowed to change your mind. Yeah, it's like all those people who are like, oh, I just you know I don't want to prove anyone wrong. I just want to change one person's mind on something. Then they change their mind, and it's like everyone thinks they're a fucking grifter. Yeah, you yeah. can't just grow as a person. That's fine. Maybe you shouldn't grow as a person. No, you, you just pick things when you're 17. Yeah, you stay with it. Well, because people who pick things when they're 17, they stay with it and they pick the right thing. Then they can actually go very deep and actually do something about the thing they believe in. What were you like when you were 17? What did you pick? 
What was I, 17? I think I was like a centrist when I was 17. Yeah? Yeah. Like you didn't have strong opinions on anything? No, I, I remember I was like a status quoist. I was like, I was like, I'm definitely in the middle. Maybe like vaguely center left. Yeah. But I, yeah, pretty much a centrist. I was like a religious Christian centrist. Interesting. Do you think that your, uh, your anti-centrism is like a sort of projection, like sort of a, like an almost like an insecurity yeah. of trying to... It's the attempt to kill myself. Yeah, like destroy a part of yourself that you know, like you have this part of yourself you know is complacent. Yeah. And like you're scared of that part of yourself and you well, want that part to die. I, I took that, I took what I believed and I expanded it throughout the populace. I was like, what if everyone believes this? I was like, oh shit, if everyone thinks how I think, nothing's going to change. Yeah. And then actually I just saw huge problems in the world that centrism wasn't addressing. Yeah. Um, and had no chance of ever addressing. And also just it was kind of like intellectually weak-minded. Um, and then I, uh, and I also like the idea of killing myself. So yeah, yeah. It's an attempt to destroy myself. Yeah. Destroy the ego, become formless. Yeah. I can see that. Not a good thing. It's obviously a, it's like, a. if I was a, if I was someone's mentor, um, like your mentor is someone who shapes you into who you want to become. It would be like, kind of like the worst thing to to take notes about, but I'm, I'm also doing this as an artistic statement, not necessarily as like, it's not all, not all art needs to be like, this is how you should be, or this is what you should try to become. Sometimes it just has to be something. And yeah. then you can like take notes about what it being makes you. Um, well, that's the good thing about art as a practice, right? Is that it's like, I hate personally, I hate giving advice, right? Uh -huh. I just don't think I'm in a position in life to give advice on many things. Yeah. I don't think anyone is. I love giving advice under forty, but but I like giving advice in the in the sense that like I know it's bad advice because <laughs> it's coming from someone who is dumb or I like, like unwise. I I think there's like you know there's certain things I'm qualified to. If someone asked me about weight loss, uh -huh. I could have uh, some good opinions. Sure. If, if someone asks me about fasting, I can tell them about that. Yeah, there's small things, but it's mm -hmm. like to give someone a grand narrative to follow. Like here is, here's your meta narrative for the rest of your life is this one axiom. And this is what you follow. Like, fuck that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But like the internet's full of 20 year old men who try to do that. Yeah. Who like just start self-help YouTube channels when they're fucking 19 and they're like, life is all about X. Yeah. It's like, you don't fucking know anything, man. Like wait, wait till your like parents die and you get like a cancer <laughs> diagnosis and you go through chemo for a year and then you come into chemo and your girlfriend, like your fucking wife cheats on you. And then right. like, your house, you know, all the fucking trials and tribulations of life that is bound to happen to you eventually, uh -huh. right? No, I mean, no, not eventually, like, but like, you know, your life's going to suck at some points in ways that you can't, like, you have not had the worst day of your life yet if you're like 25. If you pick a strong opinion when you're 17 and then you're proven wrong, you're more likely to switch to another strong opinion instead of just becoming a moderate. But if you spend the re if you spend, you know, your, your whole life picking moderate opinions, then you kind of like, you end up finding yourself in a sort of like moderate positionality. You don't really change that much within that. Um, I think it's better to pick something strong, be proven powerfully wrong. Wrong, and then you know change your opinion you know dramatically yeah. uh, rather than avoid participating in the discourse because the vast majority of people are not going to want to participate they're, they're going to want to keep their heads down and just play it safe and then that's actually what prevents you from growing yeah. that's why you don't want to be a status quoist that's why you don't want to be a centrist well being i mean i think about like pearl davis uh -huh. um if you look at like a year ago, like how fast she changes but it's still all extreme she was like pro monogamy uh -huh. for so long and then people are like it's like oh your only goal in life should be to like get married as soon as possible like that kind of like trad cat right conservative opinion and then she got proven wrong because life is more complicated than that mm -hmm. you can't just tell people to get married with like no in a vacuum and like yeah. have them get married and instead of being like oh life is more nuanced than that she was like oh well the issue must be like women are all retarded right and, and so women are the issue and now, you actually should never get married because women are so fucking useless that right. women are just gonna ruin your life right instead of adopting like oh maybe some people are different than but, others. but now we're but now we're talking about her so huge pearl w huge pearl dub come on our podcast pearl i would love to have pearl davis in the podcast <laughs> so much and just talk past her <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a I, I don't want to reveal that, man. Right, right, that right. Could, that could happen. We could okay. get Pearl. We'll, we'll That's snip, in the cards. We'll snip this out. Yeah. Um, yeah, get Pearl on the Pearl on the cast. Pearl um, on the cast. I want, um, I want Pearl Davis, and I want... Who is someone... Who is someone that people would think would agree with Pearl Davis, but wouldn't? Right. I kind of want... I want, like, Jordan Peterson and Pearl Davis to talk, because they're totally at odds with each other. Yeah. Um, Feasible. Yeah. 
that'd be a great conversation because like people people think that they would agree just on like these really service level assumptions of who they are in their opinions but mm-hmm. they actually disagree on like every stance and i think pearl thinks that jordan peterson would love her and he wouldn't love her uh-huh. because they completely disagree jordan peterson's like a fucking like, likes like romance and and love and believes in like biblical love and like really like cushy shit yeah but i don't know they might just complain about social justice warriors for 90 minutes straight <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, social justice work. that was my that was like that's what i was like when i was 17 that was my only opinion was like anti sjw really yeah i was like i thought you were like goth no i was like an anti sjw goth hick huh yeah that was like a personality when i was when i was 17 in high school huh i uh amazing i went to like new a- the new atheist to anti sjw pipeline was my Huh. Was my pipeline like when I was thirteen? My YouTube content was all like new atheist shit in like two thousand ten, two thousand nine, and then from there, um, I don't know, man. I remember, I, I remember there was like this. I'm trying to think, man. I remember like the first time. <laughs> I remember the first time I met a non-binary person, uh-huh. and I was like, "That's fucking stupid." <laughs> I was like sixteen, <laughs> right? That's like that's just what I was like, and then I I feel like I just don't give a shit. It's just it's who cares hmm. at, at this point. It's just such a it's such a it's such a fucking waste of mental resources to think about those things constantly. Right. Like there's so many bigger problems in the world than like 16 year olds who want to experiment with like gender pronouns. Like, I, I, I just I, don't care. I just think it's hard to remove the opinion from the context that the opinion exists in. Like if you're an Internet person and you have an opinion, that opinion is always going to be influenced by your audience and uh your hyper real self like pearl davis is a good example yeah you know you're you have an opinion your audience influences your opinion you end up just doing stuff to you know get more views get more people watching you um that's that's like inseparable and you know for a normal person the opinion can't be separated from like the context that they exist in like if your community thinks one thing like what would you rather have no community and be right probably not like the vast majority of people yeah i mean everyone's right with no community yeah, I mean, I mean, if you can like be alone in your room all day. Yeah, you're you're right about everything if you just don't talk to anybody. Yeah, or you just talk to people, um, or you just seek out people that already agree with you. But yeah, yeah, um, I just think yeah, it's it's hard to hard to hard to dis- d- detach that. I think it's actually impossible to detach that. That's why I'm pro- I'm probably pro Pearl Davis because she's extreme and she's like shaped by her audience and she's like uh, she, she, she's your age. Eh? She's like twenty five, twenty six. Mm-hmm. She's pretty young. She date her. Pearl. You're like the same height too. Really? She's six two? I think yeah, she's like six one, six two. That'd be a power couple. You and Pearl Davis? <laughs> That'd be crazy. She would think she'd draw my polycule? Throw her in the cule? Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, you're a you're a high status man. Throw and, her in the cule. Her she she holds the belief that monogamy is a... Uh, and in some sense she's right. I'm not gonna I think if you, if you remove the the structure of monogamy and the myths behind it. We are a very like anarchic species. And if you look at how like chimp groups operate, if you look at how like other primate groups operate, it is sort of like there is a large cast of the, of the men who don't even breed. They don't reproduce at all. And then there's a lot of the male primates have a lot of partners. And that's that's her belief is that like women like men who cheat, Women like when men cheat because it proves status. Like women instinctively want to be part of, like a a, a polycule, like a polyamorous relationship where like one man has five or six women around him because it's like that's high, that's way higher status than having like a boyfriend who only loves you. Well, if Art Chad and Pearl Davis say so, then I guess so. So she'd love <laughs> you. She'd be like, you're you're you're, uh, you're higher, like you know, internet famous, high status, going up in the world, big plans ahead of you, big future, only young. In the grand scheme of things, she wanted she'd want to join your polycule. Right. You and Pearl and uh, who else? Some other women you can get in, <laughs> get into your polycule here. We we narrowly avoided another name drop. Uh, yeah, um, I'll say throw her in the cule. Throw her in the cule. Throw her in the cule. Um, <laughs> what other? <laughs> Brad Cooper. Right. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm steering away from this uh, train of thought now. Um, Okay, so actually, I feel like uh, on, on that not that topic, but like that concept. That's the thing I always. Uh, why is it? Why is it always right wing chicks? 
I, it's weird. No, no, no. It's like it's weird to grapple with. Like I made that video about Cause, and that has like 120k views now. Yeah. I'm like Cause, Brian Donnelly. Like we'll see it. Yeah. 100 percent guaranteed. And then in the next six months, he will see that video about himself, right? Yeah. And like when you're a small YouTuber making videos about people, you don't really grasp the fact that like you're making a public thing that like the person you're making the video about will see. Yeah. But he will see it. The same way like the video. What if he feels bad? I don't know. It probably will. What if he's like, mm-hmm. it's a pretty mean. What if he cries? It's a, it's a pretty like mean. What it, if the guy who made cr- cause cries because he saw your video on cause that saying the cause was bad. He probably wouldn't. Cause he'd probably be like, oh, I'm rich. This guy's a smug. That's true. But also it is a very mean video Yeah. because it's not meaning. I, just, I'm not, I never, in the, I never in the video say like, I never say he's a bad artist. I never say he's a grifter. I never say he's like a bad person. Mm-hmm. I actually explicitly state that he's probably like a good artist. Yeah. But the video just, it's one of those, it, it, it cuts so deep philosophically that like, if someone made that video about me, mm-hmm. I would have a crisis. Yeah. I'd be like, oof. I mean, maybe not. Cause I'm also just some random YouTuber, mm-hmm. but you understand, like I would, well, I would, I, I've had moments where I'm like, I need to fade into irrelevance before I watch a video essay on me that hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was getting at is that you, I, you have a better understanding of like talking about people. Cause you have a, you have a much larger following and you know that like, if you, if you released a video about somebody, anybody, they'd see it, right? Yeah, I, I, I kind of try to avoid talking about individuals um, and just try to keep it on the ideological end because it's more comfortable, more safe. We should put X's over this guy's eyes and make him into a skull. No. We should causify your art. Causify my painting. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> no. I like this painting. We should, we, should, um, we should do that with one of your paintings. We can do it with uh, Jean-Paul Sartre over there. Jean Jean Paul, or, or you, or you should draw co- the like the guy who makes cause his cause. Has anyone causified cause? Yeah, definitely. I feel like he did it to himself. I don't think he did. I don't think he's creative enough for that. <laughs> I genuinely don't. I mean, no offense, but yeah, yeah. Okay, what I was getting at though mm. is that you understand that, like, yeah, if you made a video about Ben Shapiro, uh-huh. Ben Shapiro would see it. No, uh-huh. it's just, it, it's interesting. Yeah, I would have made a hilarious video about Ben Shapiro where I was like talking fast. That'd be that'd be funny. And he'd react to it. He's like this. this <laughs> you see that fucking? And he'd be like, "Wow, I've never seen an impression of Ben Shapiro before." <laughs> what if I did a parody of Jordan Peterson where I had a squeaky voice? Ever think about that? <laughs> He's so funny. Everyone would laugh. Ha ha ha. He does sound like that. They would say, and then at some point I would die. Uh, I would be dead. Um, but yeah, yeah. In the near future, you'd be dead. Yeah, in the near future. After that, <laughs> that would be like a that would be a warning sign. I hope my friends and family check in on me when I release <laughs> that the, video. The Jordan Peterson video. <laughs> yeah, as I hope, I hope, uh, I hope I'm I'm I'm, I'm with my family. At what that the anarcho capitalist as Jordan Peterson would think of the Ford F one fifty? Yeah, like as soon as you started saying that, I just imagined a noose. <laughs> it's uh, not um, capitalist. The, the the tyranny of communism is imposed in the substructure of this vehicle. Have we talked about uh, the future compasses of our of our lives? Okay, so now you you explain the idea. This is funny. Okay, so in, in political compass lore, there's future compasses which explain the politics of the future. You might have uh, instead of like left versus right as we traditionally understand it, it's kind of like collapse versus um, you know utopia or like primitivism versus primitivism versus technology. futurism. Yeah. yeah, different different axioms that create a sort of a, a spread of different possible futures that humanity is headed towards. A classic one might be like um, post-capitalist UBI for everyone and everyone has what they need versus like a cyberpunk, uh, Jeff Bezos lives from billion years and the proles suffer or whatever. Yeah, like if, if the x-axis is uh, utopian collapse and the y-axis is primitivism and futurism, yeah. the bottom of the, the bottom left corner would be like nuclear war, right? Right. Like pure primitivism and collapse. Yeah. And the, yeah, exactly. And the top would be like U- UBI utopia. Everyone has like bionic limbs and cancer doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's like the futurist utopia. Our Chad and I have a video where we review future compasses. You can check that out. We'll link it in the cards, but yeah, so we were doing future compasses for our own futures. Um, like one of my possible realities is a narco capitalist reviews the Ford F one fifty, and it's just it's not capitalist enough. This is actually I wanted to talk about this earlier uh, when you were mentioning like kind of getting lost in the sauce. Uh, like oh, I have to make these politics videos so I can make make real art or whatever. Yeah, like I can do this to bump up my views, and then when I get enough views, I can kind of like spend those views on making some like really good meaningful art yeah. that that I'm sort of tricking people into watching because they think they're getting a cheap dopamine hit of whatever the current 
current event is, but they actually end up consuming real art. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the example where I get completely lost in the sauce and it's just like Nazi reviews Kirby three <laughs> and, he, and he's like, it's not racist enough. Hmm. <laughs> Anarcho communist talks about sniper wolf versus Jack's film scenario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it would work. I mean, I could get a lot of views that way. Yeah. You'd probably um, like 2 million subscribers. Yeah. And it would also, you probably really have a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's one of my potential futures. He also mentioned another one of my potential futures is just I make videos where I'm like, you know, you can kill people, right? <laughs> like, you know, you like if someone you disagree with says something you disagree with, you can murder them. Um, just like pure active nihilism, like just kill everybody, have no values and uh, just actively, unironically, purely, genuinely, with no recourse, with no resistance, promote destruction, promote death. Um, yeah, I don't want to get the monetized here, but it's, it's an interesting concept that you don't see. Yeah. It seems like such an obvious conclusion to come to in a naive way uh -huh. is if you don't value like all human life is equal, yeah. then you think it's, I, it's, I'm surprised I don't, I don't see more videos of people being like, just stating you can kill people. <laughs> There's an element of that to what I'm doing because I wrestle with that. You know, I wrestle with nihilism. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but it's not, it's not interesting to just be a nihilist and I don't think it's even possible, honestly, but like re wrestling with that idea of like, yeah, why don't we just all kill each other? Yeah. Um, and if we, and you know, if we, if I believe as a pessimist that we're headed towards that path anyway, and I want to be right, I may as well just promote that. Not because I genuinely believe it, but because I want to be seen as right, you know, 15 years down the line, people are like, Oh, that guy was right. He just said we should kill each other. And that's what we did. Yeah. No one wants to save the world. They just don't want to be right about how the world will end. Yeah. That's like the new mode of being. That's like the, the or invest in the right stocks. Yeah. Raytheon. Raytheon, you know that stock jumped like twenty percent. Raytheon I, and uh, Lockheed I know, Martin, and I profited. Did you actually? No. <laughs> <laughs> Want to say good on you? Yeah, the crypto, crypto is doing. Uh, crypto always does better when the world collapses. I think. Pump it up. Yeah. Pump it. I don't know. I don't like crypto. I think. I think. Uh, I think it's in one form or another. It's probably inevitable. Either government mandated crypto or libertarian crypto. I like crypto as like a replacement of fiat, but I don't like crypto in its current manifestation of just like pump and dump fucking get get rich quick schemes. Right, retarded. Are you what? What happens when the government wants you to put a chip in your hand and you can just like boop and you get your government mandated cryptocurrency and they control for inflation by just like altering the currency directly? I don't know, man. If it was, if I've lived in a town uh -huh. and the town had like eight thousand people, yeah, and there's a big wall around it, mm -hmm. and we had our own currency in the town. Hmm. with our own chips right i'd love to do that huh. i'd be ecstatic yeah but if the government of, of canada asked me to do that i'm gonna go down screaming kicking right. and screaming C kicking and screaming kicking and screaming hmm. outside of uh parliament fair enough yeah i think a lot of people would yeah i mean not, not in canada we're all pussies we have no rebellious spirit no no rebellious spirit none of those trucker guys would do it they're off they're all alberta and that's not canada right you go like Tor like toronto and go east Nothing. There's nothing over here. We have no gumption. We're a soulless, ballless fucking country. Get that chip in your brain. I've really heard opinions about that. Yeah. I don't know why Canada is so... <sighs> Weak is the wrong word. But you never have to worry about losing your wallet. <gasps> oh, you didn't mention that part? <laughs> that sounds amazing. It'd be so much more convenient. Oh, I, I lose that darn thing all the time. I lose my wallet so much that I might give up fundamental human rights to <laughs> avoid, <laughs> avoid doing that anymore. That's most people. It's like those Tupperware commercials where like they open the cupboard and all the Tupperware falls in them and they're like, ah, uh -huh. if only I had stackable Tupperware. Right. <laughs> That's like, it just shows like some Gen Z in, in their room, like a 23 year old, just like melting in malaise, just mm -hmm. in a fucking disgusting, messy room with like just bills all around them. And like, wouldn't you like if the government just handled this automatically? Right. Get a brain chip. Now you have time for what you love. And it's just like masturbating. Yeah. When it comes to actual like specific ideas, I can't uh, be, I don't, I, I can't find, I can't make myself be too judgmental about them, but I am excited by ideas. Like I just like ideas. And even if they're like, I don't know, um, even if they're contradictory ideas, like I find, I find some cultural far left ideas very exciting. I love ideas too. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, when people talk about California and they're like, this dystopian nightmare is going to fall apart. I'm like, let it run. I want to see what, like, let California sure. go crazy. I want to see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, that's, that's what we call a form of accelerationism. But what if it works out? Or if it right. doesn't work out? But why is everyone so obsessed? Experimentation. With I, I do yeah. think that one of my unironic, like, positions that I will 
um, push for is just like experimentation. And that's, that's actually like, that's actually a good case for localism, which is like you allow local experiments to run. Yeah. Like what if, what if one state does UBI? What if it works out really well? What if it works out terribly? I don't know. Yeah. Let it run. Let it run. Let it, let them cook. Let them cook. I think we're in the era of let them cook. Let them. Yeah. Cause like California, no one's obliged to stay there. Mm-hmm. It's in every Californian's best interest to not live in California. Mm-hmm. It's cheaper to live everywhere else in the U S it's safer to live everywhere else in the U S it's like the worst state. So if someone chooses to stay in California and uh, they're, they're making they're using their agency to make that decision, then like fucking let them let California do whatever it wants. Cause if in 20 years, California is like a fucking homeless free drug, like degeneracy free UBI utopia in the West coast in the, in the, in the West coast sun, sunny beaches, no poverty. Fuck. Yeah, man. Let it happen. I don't know why like, you go on Twitter and it's like clown world and it's just like smash and grab at Nordstrom in Los Angeles. The world's going to fall apart. Yes. You specifically go on Twitter and you see clown world first thing. I do see clown world. I see, you know, clown world and Elon Musk talk. Clown world's like one of the biggest Twitter pages. Uh huh. There was like, you know, how you can do those Twitter chat rooms now where it's like the channels where it's like eight people talking. You can like listen in. Yeah. It was like Elon Musk, libs of TikTok and clown world. And I'm like, these are like clown world and libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok is funnier because it's just like they don't really give it context. It's just like, here's things on TikTok. That's funny because it's like they're not making fun of anything and they're not giving commentary to anything. They're like letting people make fun of themselves. Uh That's a funny concept. Clown World is like actively destroying the fucking planet. I hate that Twitter page so much. Huh? I fucking hate that Twitter page. I think that's the scourge of the fucking planet. Huh? It's like. They put, you know, you know the video, you seen that video recently? Lauren Southern made a video about it. The, the a girl who's complaining about her nine to five. Yeah. Yeah. Like Clown World posted that and they're like, look at this dumb bitch. Look at mm-hmm. this dumb Zoomer bitch. Welcome mm-hmm. to the real life baby. And it had like 10 million views. Mm-hmm. And all the comments were like, ha, huh, this generation's so lazy. Yeah. It's like, why are you not on her side? Right. Like you're like a 23 year old woman is complaining about having to work 60 hours a fucking week. Yeah. Because they're too poor to live in the city, even though they have a full time job commute the fucking there's so much bureaucracy infrastructure is so bad public transit is so bad it takes two hours to get to and from fucking work they have no time to start a family they have no time to fucking work out or eat healthier all the things conservatives tout all the things fucking conservatives platform on is being healthy being fucking um stable and starting a family and they literally no one in gen z has the opportunity to fucking execute those things because they're so fucking busy and broke and you see that and you're like ah. These, these dumb fucks, uh-huh. this dumb generation, they're, they're fried. <laughs> it's retarded. Like, be on her side. Why are you mm-hmm. not on her side? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fucking retarded. I hate it, man. It makes me so fucking upset. Maybe they're just weak. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Gen Z's just weak. We're, we're not the... Oh, I hate that. I'm, I love Gen Z, man. I hate the fucking perspective that we're weak. Because we're like, we're not. We live in the most fucked up economic situations since the Great Depression. Everything's so fucking confusing. Everything's so confusing that boomers can't grasp, but no other generation can grasp how fucking confusing everything is now. Mm-hmm. We're the most productive generation. We're the most isolated. We're like literally being experimented on. Every fucking six months, we're being experimented on. There's literally a philosophy called the race to the bottom of the brainstem that all the tech companies, all the social media companies practice. We're like, on how can you, because it's like, there's this, there's this ideal. There's this like perfection of eventually we can create something that will keep someone's attention captured for like the entire day. Right. That eventually that is, that is the goal they're working towards is to create a platform that will keep you engaged for 12 hours a day. And they're working towards it. That's their end goal. That's what the infinite scroll is. That's what the TikTok reel is. All the algorithms are predicated on that being the final goal. Like we are being fucking experimented on and dissected. And then people look at our generation and think like, oh, they're that this one generation, all the other generations before them are perfect. And then this one generation that we created that fucking boomers raised is somehow fundamentally wrong and it's not our fault. It's no one's fault. It's their own. F- it's by their own free will. They have fucked themselves up. <laughs> That's horseshit. You do be spitting dough. Cause it's, just, it's fucked. And I'm like, I'm not fucking like liberal. I'm not like a, I'm not like a crybaby about this. I'm like, as you know, pull yourself, pull yourself up by your bootstraps as any boomer is like, I think like work hard, work your fucking ass off, get what you want out of life. Will the power, like, don't let anyone, no one's coming to save you. Like you're on your own. I'm all for that. But there's just such, such a fundamental we have such fuck, such such broken conditions. We can't even we can't even execute that. Um, we can't even follow that. We can't even we can't even fucking execute that because how fundamentally broken everything is right now, man. 
Yeah, it's like this uh, arms race of technology gets better, captures our attention. We like develop strategies to keep our attention. Um, and then technology gets even better and blows past our our guards, our barriers, the things that we've evolved to like figure that out. Like we could have a whole generation worth of wisdom used just to deal with like early stage tech, like phone technology. And we didn't even get that to that point before technology got even better. Yeah. And then gap, like social media apps grabbed our attention even better. And then, okay, now we're like developing strategies around that log out of your Instagram, log out of your Twitter. Um, so you have to log, log back in. That's a bit of extra resistance. Okay. Then COVID happens. Boom. You got like, you can't go outside. You got, you got to spend like a year inside indoors. Obviously you're going to get those dopamine feedback loops reinforced. And then, you know, it's like, uh, it, it's difficult. It's difficult for Gen Z because, uh, we don't have any wisdom that came before us to like help us. Yeah. You, you can't ask your dad how to use less time on your phone. Yeah, It's unprecedented. <laughs> he doesn't know. Yeah. And he shouldn't know. I mean, like, it's not his fault that he doesn't know. It's just, we have to figure it out. We have to get, we have to garner good wisdom. We have to d- disseminate the good wisdom, but we're only doing that based off our limited human models and technology is moving faster than that. So I don't know, you, you go to like, go to fucking, uh, go to Kohl's, go to like Barnes and Noble or Indigo, like all the bookstores, the self-help section is the biggest section of the bookstore. And every single one of those books is about how to avoid the decadence we've built for ourselves. Yeah. There's no, yeah, that, 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 that's what, that's what self-help is now. Yeah. It used to be, um, your self-help used to be about like, you know, like optimizing yourself and maximizing. And now if you can just not look at your phone, if you can like look at your phone an hour less a day, you're winning. Yeah. Which is, you know, if you want to win, it's kind of a low bar. That's what we've, that's what we've come to, man. Like, fuck. But it, that's like a really good, if you're a competitive person and you want to win, quote unquote, take an hour off your phone a day. You're gonna, like you're winning. You're like above 95% of people. I'm going to look up what percentage of Gen Z is sober. Cause I guarantee you it's like 30. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to make the case why, uh, why all this is nonsense though. So, um, every generation thinks that they're the most important generation. Every, every generation creates generational myths about themselves. We're no different. Uh, it could just be that we're caught up in our own myths, caught up in our own delusions, lost in our own sauce. And in reality, uh, we are just weak minded. We're all just weak willed. And we need to take a lesson from our parents and grandparents and great grandparents and, and grab those bootstraps and lift ourselves into the air and levitate. And, uh, there you go. Then you're, then you're on top of the world looking down on all these plebs and then you win 20 minutes off your phone. You win 30, 30 minutes off your phone. You win cold Turkey blocker. Those definitely like those blocking apps, they'll definitely work. You won't just, you know, just find some way around them <laughs> yeah. immediately. Oh my fucking God. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 3.5 more hours a week. That's 3.5 hours you can fucking hustle a week. <laughs> it's over. Half an hour off your phone a week. Also, yeah, Gen Z is the most sober generation. We, huh. like, we like consume the least alcohol than like the four previous generations. But we also consume the most other drugs. Because other drugs are better for making money? You ever think about that? I have thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, al- alcohol is the worst. Speaking of which, I'm gonna I'm gonna chew some more nicotine gum, but we can keep talking because my my mic is wireless. Yeah, can you can you refill my coffee? Sure. sure. Yeah, we well, we got to get more caffeine in you. More caffeine, more nicotine. Um, yeah, yeah, we're all we're all sober, and because uh, you just have to work so much. Like I remember, I was and God God bless my mother, such a lovely woman. But I remember we were having a conversation about I'm only uh, it drinking a little bit. and like partying when I was in university. Like I was like uh, four years ago. I was 21. That's a lot of coffee. And he doesn't need all that coffee. <laughs> and she was saying uh, she in, in the same sentence, she had told me, like, don't go out. You don't have the money to go out. And then like the next sentence was like, oh, but when I was your age, you know, p- a pint of beer cost 15 cents. So we would go out like every every four four days a week. We would go out and and drink. But you can't go out because beer is uh, $12 a pint now. That was the conversation we had. And I just thought, like, how, how can anyone say that? Have, how can anyone look at, like, Gen Z going out for a drink? Like, you, like you, you look at Gen Z, go to the bar, like, twice a week, the way every other generation did. And it's only wrong for us to do it. Every other generation that spent their weekends at the bar hanging out with their friends, that was, like, beautiful social time for them. That was... That was integral parts of their, of their 20s, growing up, figuring themselves out, partying, taking risks. But when Gen, when Gen Z does it, we're like lazy alcoholics. You know, this is going to get clipped out of context when you start complaining about Gen Alpha. 
is it? Yeah, you're gonna like you're gonna become a boomer. You're gonna get older, and you're gonna complain about younger generations like everyone else. No, I'm bullish on Gen Alpha. I love Gen Z. I love Gen Alpha more. Okay, Gen Beta will come along, and you'll be like, you know, I don't, I don't know about like they're they're actually modifying themselves to be like literal furries, like they're getting the the cat ears on and like they're covered in fur. I think that's too far. I'll sleep. I'll sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, there's no third places anymore. We decided to destroy the second place. Uh, the only third places are pubs. Um, so I love the pub. We got the we got the pub. That's our third place. We got uh, we got we got pool, pool tables. Yeah, uh, but those are just pubs as well. What's the third place and the second place? Uh, so you have like home. That's your first place, and work. That's your second place. Yeah. And then um, the ideal in like city planning is to like get a third place going, and the third place could be like church. It could be like. Uh, like a pub, a place to a gather. Farmer's market. Yeah, just yeah. a place you can go whenever you want. Um, meet meet interesting people, et cetera, et cetera. But instead of uh, developing third places, we instead decided to destroy the second place, which was work, and now you work from home. So you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. You have one place now. Yeah, you work from home and you're drunk. Yeah. There's two, th- two things you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. It makes me sad. I love Gen Z so much. I actually feel, I feel like genuine like emotion when I think about it. It's it's because, that's because it's your in-group. So I I love Gen Z, man. You ever talk to you ever talk to Gen Z? I've, I've stuffed on once or twice. Okay, I, it it takes such look, man. For for the amount that like fucking boomers and conservatives complain about like trans people, oh. it takes a lot of intelligence to like question your own gender. Yeah, that doesn't come from being stupid or naive. That comes from like overthinking and like having so much self awareness of being a human. Right. That's where those. That's where that idea comes from. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like. I don't know. I, I just, I, I really, really like, I just don't agree with the idea that we're just fucking, uh, like drooling, stimmed out fucking idiots. We're not, man. Like I'll, I'll yell about it. I'll, I'll yell about it again if I like get going. Okay. So I'm not going to get yell. I'm not going to yell about it. What did, what did, what else did we want to, we want to talk about We wanted to make fun of people that kill themselves. Oh yes, of course. Can yeah. you imagine killing yourself and missing out on the big show? Couldn't be me. I know. Actually, um, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. You really should not kill yourself. No. No, man. I, I think that... I don't know why this, this shouldn't be a hot topic issue because it wasn't like a hot topic for like most of human history until for some reason we like... Someone kills themselves and we're like, oh, they must have been suffering so hard. Their life must have been so difficult. Bless their poor soul. It's like, no. Don't kill yourself. Just don't kill yourself. Yeah. I don't know what the... It's not that hard to grasp as someone who has been like depressed too. Yeah. As someone who has been like suicidally depressed. Yeah. Just don't like, don't kill yourself. Yeah. I don't have any sympathy for, for suicide people. <laughs> I do. It's like terminal illness. Maybe if, it, if it's like, it depends, psh, depends on the suicide. Psh, psh, their ghosts were here. If it's just like, psh, psh, oh, psh, psh, psh. oh, I can't do anything. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Or like, you're like a successful artist and then you have like a downturn and then you overdose on heroin. Uh, some people are just tortured, man, but it's like, I don't know. I know it's more complicated than that. And I sound like I'm being insensitive, but I'm not being insensitive. If we head the collective, if we, we don't have the collective myth that suicide is like a sin, Mm -hmm. we should have a collective myth that suicide is a sin. I don't mean, I don't mean a sin in a literal or at the very least cringe. Yeah. I don't, I don't mean a sin is like, like literally like a biblical sin. I mean, sin is like just like a metaphor for like a bad thing. No one should kill themselves. People should like it should be like just disrespectful to kill yourself. It shouldn't be seen as like some, some victimhood, right? Cause it's seen as like a mar- like martyrdom almost. It's seen as like victimhood. Like if you kill yourself out of depression, it's like you were a victim of something, but it's like, no, you just, you have to like suicidal thoughts are so strange too. Cause you like hype yourself up into them, mm-hmm. right? You like hype yourself up to kill yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I've, you're like, you, you have to like kind of stack delusion upon delusion upon delusion. Yeah. Like you have to stay alone with your own thoughts for so long that you get the dopamine to get there. Yeah. And it starts feeling like good. It starts feeling really good. It starts feeling like really ego fulfilling to like just keep kind of thinking about it. Here's a, here's a suicidal guy. Bzz, 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 idiot. Bzz. <laughs> <laughs> Suicidal people are, are not, not, not smart. If their ghosts were here, I'd just go no, mow, the, mow down a bunch of suicidal people. I think suicidal people, suicidal people are too, they're not, they're not, they're not like super smart, but they're smarter than the average person. Yeah. There's a suicide. 
there's like a IQ curve. Yeah, there's a suicide bell curve yeah. of like like the 80 IQ is like why kill self. The 120 IQ is like I don't that. understand anything, and the, the 160 is like why life is beautiful. Why would right. I, why would right. I? And obviously we're on the high end of the IQ curve. I'm on the I'm on the low end. I'm not on the high end. That's just a that's just a that's just that's just because you're high IQ enough to know that people don't like it when you say you're high IQ. No. No, I'm not smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're dumb. We're dumb, and you shouldn't listen to anything we say. This is the hor- The reason it's called horseshoe theory is because Greg's smart and I'm stupid, and that's the horseshoe. There's many horseshoes. You leave, leave what you think the horseshoe is in the comments below. Yeah, what what am I? What is Greg? Am I far left and he's far right? Am I autistic and he's schizophrenic? Leave in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> horseshoe theory. Oh man, I want like a horseshoe theory uh, fan fiction. No, I don't. You, you don't want I don't that. want that. No. I want horseshoe theory lore. Theory crafting. That's not right. fan fiction. Theory crafting. Uh-huh. I want horseshoe theory theory crafting. No, don't make fan fiction, please. The uh, other thing of horseshoe theory is we'll get, we'll get all kinds of different people on the show and with all kinds of different beliefs and opinions. And I think what brings us all together is stuff that is more important than the opinion that you have on some specific issue. And it's the fact that you're thinking about the issue in the first place. The fact that you're engaged with this in the same conversation and debate puts you on a level where only you people can communicate about the same thing. Yeah. I mean, like the, your political enemies are the only people who are going to read your, your manifesto in order to debunk it. The average sports fan is not going to do that. You know, the average person who just like, likes, doesn't really engage with the in ideas. Yeah. Just wants to keep their head down. No, like take, Stay out of it. Take a red pill person. Take like a red pill dating guy and then take like a really like lovey dovey, like romance is real dating person. Like that, that kind of like, yeah. I don't, don't want to say like blue pill, but that kind of dating yeah. advice, right? They both agree that something is wrong with dating in 2023. Mm. Something is wrong with intergender relationships. Yeah. They have more in common than someone who doesn't, who doesn't think about those things. Yeah. Right? That's beautiful. Those two people can agree on something. They agree something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like to just get past. It's not an automatic assumption that like everyone assumes it's not, it's not automatic that everyone assumes something is wrong. Right. Yeah. Some people don't even think about those things, Yeah, but you should think about those things because it is an issue. Like dating is an issue in 2023, for example. So like climate change. Yeah. Right. Like, like even like a climate change denier mm-hmm. still gives climate change enough power to like think about it because mm-hmm. climate change does have enough power because it exists in some sense, whether you think yeah. it's real or not. Yeah, it is real. Like there's something there. If there was nothing there, you wouldn't think about it either which way. Mm-hmm. So those people should talk. It's merely it's more important for those people to talk than for them to fucking disagree with each other. Why do they disagree? Why do why do the climate change deniers disagree with the with the climate change believers? Yeah, why? <laughs> they disagree, I guess, because um, they're on they're on completely opposite ends of the issue there. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, like the 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 climate. I think the climate, the climate believers that they like need the skeptics. They like read all the skeptics, you know, insane claims or whatever. And then they have to like, they can debunk it. That's like fuel for their channel. Um, I don't know. I think, I think we're kind of post climate skeptic at this point. It's all just varying levels of cope on both ends. Very varying levels of how, yeah, how, or how bad it is. Cause yeah, I think, I don't know anyone yeah, to deny that climate change exists just like, doesn't make factual sense. I think, it, I think, I think the, um, the it's all fires cope is, is pretty strong. Like it's arsonists, the arsonists cause the, uh, tornadoes and stuff. Yeah. You see that, you see those, uh, that satellite imagery of those Quebec fires. Yeah. They all started at the same time. It's crazy. It's literally like one hour, there's nothing. The next hour, there's like 20 plumes of smoke over all of Quebec. Just like, phew. It's a space satellite going. Bzew, 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 bzew. Yeah, direct. It's energy. just copes. I mean, it's just like no one, no one, no one is really uh, fit to uh, engage with when engage with the idea that it's it's extremely bad and that we haven't done nearly enough about it and that it's too late to do anything about it. I, I'm pre- I'm pretty bullish on the fact we'll just figure it out. Yeah, I really don't think the world's going to end. But like, how are we going to figure it out? How, or like make a logical argument for it because no one's ever been able to do that. <laughs> it's always just like, eh, we'll figure something out. Now the free market will figure it out. Yeah, that's that's what I hear. The technology will invent like carbon capture or something. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're doing it actively. Uh-huh. If like carbon becomes, if, if global war, if if climate change becomes so bad and so undeniable and so visible that it needs to be solved, there will be 
the free market will solve it, and then investors will invest in the technology that solves it and prop it up more. And right. It solve. That's, that's what we're doing right that, now. That's that's one of the futures on the future compass. We are on. I just uh, what was it? The fucking I don't know what council it is. Some council of scientists, uh-huh. uh, or economists, but they said like we're just like on. A, we're now on an unstoppable track to net zero. Like it's right. so economically viable. Like there's so much money in making renewable energy mm-hmm. that it's like unstoppable. Like it's just the way we're going to go. Like mm-hmm. coal and fossil fuels are like inevitably going to die out. Right. There's not enough money in coal and fossil fuels to keep them propped up anymore. Right. There's so much more money in green technology to invest, to invent, to implement so much more money. Few. That's where we're going. That's where we're going to go. Sounds like everything's going to be okay. You think we're going to let the world end? Uh, I think that the world's not going to end. You think we're going to let like New York go underwater? It's not going to happen. It's not not going to happen for people who have a house on the 50th floor of the. No, they won't let it happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And there's too many people, like there's too many people who care uh-huh. I, as much as we think that there's like, there's this, this, this cabal of billionaires who just don't give a fuck about the average person. It's not true. Some of them don't. There's a lot of psychopaths, but like, there's people that care in the elites. Uh-huh. I genuinely believe that. You know what? But the, I mean, I'm not coping here. I've come, it, to, I've come to that through. Like I, I used to be really angry about it. Uh-huh. I used to think no one cared. Right. I used to like just completely. I was like, the world's going to end in 20 years. Uh-huh. Uh, don't have children. Complete fatalist. Like we, it's over. Like this is the last generation. Right. I don't believe that anymore. I, 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 I've got a bit of a horseshoe theory. Uh, I think you should have a bunch of children and it's over. <laughs> So they can suffer too. Yeah, <laughs> they can suffer more than you. Maximize suffering. That's what the the the, the, the boomers. They all got beat by their like PTSD uh, World War II fathers. Right. And then they just like uh, that's their mode of being. Yeah. That's their that's their axiom is they just accumulated all the property and then made and now they like have have kids just to laugh at them because mm-hmm. they're fucking PTSD World War II fathers like beat the shit out of them growing up. Right. I just think you should have a lot of kids so that when uh, food gets scarce, you can eat your kids. <laughs> chronos them. Do a little Chronos. Or they eat you. Yeah, either way. More more fle- flesh stacks running around. That's a future compass of like like the t- like the what Christmas is like in 2065 is just like everyone gets around and eats their father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I think the um the perma frost stuff, uh the carbon feedback loop stuff is pretty worrying. But uh Let's explain that to me. I don't want to because make, make me sad. No, you have too much hope for the future. Make me sad. The permafrost in Siberia, like the northern places, the contains much of carbon, and it's already at the point where the permafrost is going to melt and release way more carbon than the amount of cars that we have. Yeah, and then that carbon leads to more warming. You know, what, you know what it also does? What? <sighs> Frees up crop land. Frees up arable air, arable soil. That's an argument I hear a lot. Is uh, it'll, it'll actually be good for the West, or it'll be good for Canada, but uh, it doesn't take into account the fact that there will be three billion climate refugees. What if I do this and I just pull it like a bunch of hair every time I, every time I grab my head? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hair's looking, hair's looking fine. It's, you've, been, you've been doing a lot of uh, anti-balding techniques. I do a lot of anti-balding techniques. Yeah. Microneedle. Me too. Finasteride. Minoxidil. Yeah. Rosemary. Yeah. Nazoral. Mm-hmm. Red light therapy. Cold showers. Yeah, it's a good, good combo. Peppermint oil. Yeah, peppermint oil. Scalp similar. massages. Scalp massages. <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, uh, what was I going to say? I forgot. Going bald, climate change. Going bald because of climate change. Going bald because of climate change. You're so stressed about climate change. That's my next, <laughs> that's it's my next video. Stress makes you bald and then you like start bald and you're like, so I got stressed. so stressed. I went bald because of climate change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Mr. Beastification of every, of YouTube, every YouTube video. Every YouTube video. Yeah. Just have to open every every YouTube video just saying exactly what you think and yelling it. I lost all my hope for humanity when I saw the forecast for climate change. I may make a whole YouTube video where every sentence sounds like the first sen- sentence of a Mr. Beast video. But what if Mr. Beast just solves climate change? He's like, I, I, I solve climate change. I, yeah, he has a complete incentive to do it. He makes yeah. so much money. He gets so many views. <laughs> It completely fits into his like. He act. solves climate change. And it's like a nine out of ten. 
<laughs> he's, like, <"Fuck." laughs> he's like, no, they weren't. The, the hogs didn't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't do this one again, boys. Sorry. Cancel that. No, no, I know. Yeah, we we're going to do that five part series. No, scrap it. Scrap it. We have to fucking do Squid Games too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what would happen. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't think the world's ending. I think Gen Z is fucking awesome. Yeah. I don't think the world's going to end because of climate change. Yeah. I think things will only get better. Yeah. I think the next 15 years are going to suck. Okay. I think the next 15 years are like going to be very bad. I like that. I think that's mostly a life affirming perspective. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I will not deny that like we're entering a depression. Okay. Let's get back. Let's get back to this though. You're, you're blowing up. What's your future compass like? What's your future compass look like? My future, my future compass. Um, okay. So my, my, my axes here my x y axis mm-hmm. is um passionate my x axis is passionate at the top dispassionate on the bottom mm-hmm. and my y axis is profitable and non-profitable mm-hmm. okay so like making extremely like ideologically driven paintings and being an author and talking about like men's issues and suicide and all these things I like really care about and think about daily. And then like being really good at it, being like a really good author, really good painter, become like one of the most famous artists. That's like the top, like passionate and profitability, mm. which I care about those things. Like, I, I don't want to like, I don't, I'm not, so I've never not cared about money. I'm not going to pretend to be somebody who's never not cared about money. Mm. I've always cared about money a little bit. I'm just fine. Yeah. I, I'm not that person. Some people are that person. That's great for them. But I'm yeah. just like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to cope myself into being like, money doesn't matter. Yeah. Money matters to me. Yeah. Um, dispassionate profitability is like, I make like black pill videos. Mm. I totally, I totally have it in me to like make black. I'm like, I'm autistic enough to make like black pill videos. Mm-hmm. Um, even if they don't apply to my, my real life at all, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't reflect anything I actually feel or like anything I experience. Yeah. I just be complete, completely like locked in my room idiosyncratic writing, never telling anyone about my ideas, never getting fucking feedback on anything I think or any video I make, except for internet comments of people who seek my content out specifically to cope themselves into believing what they believe. Yeah. And it creates a giant feedback loop and I think I'm right all the time. Mm. Dispassionate profitability. Dispassionate unprofitable. I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> Just on the street. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I'm, that's, that's, that's in the cards. Mm-hmm. I could totally see myself like losing it. Yeah. Um, I see myself, I have like a potential to lose it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And unprofitability, unprofitable, passionate, also mm. schizophrenic. Huh. Yeah. But it's just, you're making it work. Unprofitable. Yeah, no, I'm passionate. Oh, I'm passionate. Oh, passionate. Right, right. Okay. So schizophrenia is actually half your compass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being schizophrenic is half my compass. In one of them, um, fuck man. The, yeah. The sad schizophrenic, I'm homeless. The happy schizophrenic, I'm like in the woods homeless. Hmm. It's like being in a city homeless versus being in the woods homeless. Hmm. Yeah. I think my, um, I think I'd I'd go three axes. One is uh, slop versus art uh, for me. One is um, success versus failure. And then one is probably like online versus reality. Like there's a future where I just stop doing YouTube and I start like just playing at local venues for the rest of my life. And I like never touch the internet again because it's been so harmful for my brain. Yeah. Um, Like you just do like a stand up variety show. Yeah. Meet a good girl, <laughs> some kids. The end. Yeah. Buy a house outside of Toronto. 30%. 30% of me having kids. 30% you're going to have 30. What do you mean? Like 30% what? chance I have children. You should, you should have a little Greg. Little Greg. <laughs> He'd come out 60. Little, <laughs> I want your, your kid comes out 6'2", but 11 pounds. <laughs> like the weight of a baby, but the height of a man. <laughs> yeah, he's, like just, he's honeycomb. He's yeah. just like, <laughs> A complicated birth. <laughs> He's made of cotton. <laughs> I'm um, likely, likely with my genes. Um, yeah, like, uh, or like, you know, slop, slop failure is you keep, you know, you do the ca- anarcho capitalist thinks about the F one fifty, but it has like no views even. So it's like you've just followed, you followed what you think the market wants from you, but you actually like, have just misled yourself. Yeah, you're too stupid to see what the market wants. Yeah, like it's like it works for you once. You know, going viral is kind of like you before you're viral, you're making all these different like poses, seeing what the audience likes and you find one pose and you hold it and the audience likes it and you keep holding the pose and the, the cheers get less and less as you keep holding that pose and eventually you get tired of holding that pose. And then eventually you crack and you fall 
And then the audience cheers because you made a different pose and they like that pose. They like to see you fall. And you're like, huh? You liked me falling? And you get back up and you fall again. You fall again. You keep hitting your head and they cheer less and less each time because they're get, they get bored of what you've been doing. Anyway, I forgot where I was going with this. That's uh, slop failure. Slop failure. Yeah. Yeah. You should write a song called slop failure. Slop failure. Yeah, slop failure. That's a good, that's a good uh, tier list song. iceberg. <laughs> what do you need? I'm a slop failure. My views have receded. <laughs> yeah. Tear list iceberg. Um, Posting every week. I wonder would, how I'll manage to make ends meet. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I would just like to. I would just like to make songs and do a Joji, but I have no idea how he did that. He's, uh, that that's the most in- insane career so sh- shift I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah, it's like Filthy Frank became like a famous, famous, famous musician instead of just running himself into the ground on yeah. YouTube. And people don't even know he's Joji. Yeah. Like you see that there was a clip of him. Or people don't even know he's Filthy Frank. There was a clip of him talking about like coming on his own face and eating it mm-hmm. at a concert. He's like singing, <laughs> and he's like, "And I cut my own face and I rub it all over my face." And the audience like stops clapping and like goes silent as he says it. <laughs> and he does it in the Filthy Frank voice, <laughs> and you can see him, like he's literally like cracking. <laughs> you can see him like like fucking the 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 shell is coming off. And then he stops doing it, just goes back to singing. Yeah, it's really really funny. That's a good ending. Well, it's a it's an ending. Yeah, he makes good music. Yeah. Um, I he should just do like he should just go on if he went on cold ones, it'd be a good ending. Hmm. That would complete it for me. That completes the loop. If if he goes back on cold ones, I dubs is dead though. Why? Because he has a sex worker wife. Yes. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> and he made the video about like ranking cheese, it's based on which generation would eat them. Have you seen that video? Do you see that thumbnail? I didn't watch the video. Yeah, I, I think I think he's maybe in a period of trying to find what works for him now. I think Anisi is like, this one's really great, honey. Rubbing his back. <laughs> we should take a break now. You worked really hard today. You guys, you want, you want to watch Netflix? Yes, yeah, so that's the that's the that's the lesson here. Is uh, I Dubs? I got a cam for an hour first, and then I'll I'll find a show for us to watch. I Dubs' soul was consumed by a succubus, and he had no agency over the matter. She just went. <laughs> she, she sucked. His, she sucked out his soul with a straw. I I hate. Uh, you know, there's this thing where I, I, I think it's a, where the red pill completely falls flat is that you have to accept that you are lovable in some sense. And the red pill teaches you to just like keep increasing your value and like you're not worthy of love until you're like at a certain point in your life. And if you follow that, you'll never find yourself worthy of love. Uh-huh. Right. So like I dubs, um, maybe this wasn't the case, but it's like. He has, you know, like six million, seven million subscribers. He's probably a multimillionaire. He's like one of the most successful, con- like beloved content creators. Like not as successful as like subjective compared to like Mr. Beast, but like beloved, like content cop is beloved content, right? Mm. But he never, he never sees himself as someone worthy of love, right? So the first person comes along that shows him anything. And, 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 and it seems more of like a power grab on her behalf based on like their relationship how they act in public how she acts with him how they talk to each other like the text that got leaked between like her between him and her him saying like i'll never find anyone like you when she doesn't really seem like right anybody i know not because she's a sex worker not because like anything she just seems like a very like lackluster kind of person it's just objectively right um he never he never sees himself as worthy of love he never sees himself as somebody that could be loved by like someone who is good for him because he just keeps thinking about, you know, you keep thinking as a man, you have to keep rising. You have to keep leveling up. I agree. I agree with all the anti idub stuff on the sole basis uh, that he didn't uh, talk to me or credit me uh, with the meta irony stuff. It's true. He stole that. You know who wouldn't steal that? Who? A complete and whole man would have said, I found this wonderful concept from YouTuber j I'd like to. Or at least or at least uh, credited any of the other people in the in the sphere who were responsible for popularizing the idea and uh thinking about the concepts but i mean it wasn't it's, it's not like it's just me i uh, i uh i was inspired to do that concept from the philosopher's meme which is a great meme page and um the guy in charge of that does irony research and is actually and like a real academic did i do that video for the sam hyde yeah thing? he did it to explain why sam hyde was so hard to talk about because of the the meta irony yeah although i don't think sam hyde is very that it was really that impenetrable no, not at all. I think he's impenetrable. He's impenetrable to iDubs specific. Only iDubs. Yeah. I think to most people he's not. He's not impenetrable. Yeah. He seems pretty like normal. Now. His comedy is ironic, but it's like it's, it's it's his comedy. Yeah. I mean, 
you can't be that's the thing with like meta irony or ambiguous irony where you keep yourself in a bit of a superposition that only works for so long yeah if you approach somebody from a position of like oh this person has so much power mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm approaching this person solely because i want to like crack them they have so much power they're not gonna let you crack them mm-hmm. people do that with you mm-hmm. right like you're you're ironic yeah people people their 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 parasocial connection to you is like greg is this uh, impenetrable irony master and you never know mm. what he's thinking you never know what he's going to do next mm. someone approaches you with that like uh that attitude you're going to give it to them yeah right and you watch like the idubs sam hyde thing if he was like yeah what's up dude like yeah i just like love your comedy mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure sam would have been like sam knew that idubs was approaching him as like uh from a position of like of weak not weakness but like um wanting something from him right so sam so sam Hyde's not going to give that to him if it was like two friends hanging out it would have been like a completely different video, a completely different context, but it wasn't, hmm. but it wasn't. Hmm. we got to start talking about more left-wing drama, drama among left-wingers. Is Sam Hyde and Idub's right-wing drama? It's a, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely on the right. Left-wing drama is not funny though. Cause they don't do anything funny to each other. All they do is like eat each other alive over like True. relationship drama. True. It is like, pretty lame. Left wingers need to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more zany in their drama. Do some like real world stuff. Like no one's going to show up to um, like uh, the Frank Hassel stuff showing up to Boogie's house with a gun. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Right wing or left wing drama is like so-and-so had an uncomfortable relationship with a woman 10 years ago. That's pretty cringe. Yeah, now I'm going to turn on him. Yeah. That's just, it's so, so fucking cringe, man. Hmm. I think that the left is just all the left is missing is like fraternity, yeah. If the, or like a just general friendship, you know, not, frater- not just fraternity, but like friends. actual community, actual community. If they just had that, if they had like okay, my mm-hmm. friends and the people who have treated me well matter more than like most things in my life, except maybe my family. If they just had that axiom, the left would the left wing internet would be great. Do right wingers have community? Yeah, they have, yeah they have tons of fraternity. Where does how does that manifest? I don't know. I think, like, I mean, like, like the red pill people operate as like a fucking unit. You know what I mean? Like Pearl Davis isn't going to talk bad about Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's not going to talk bad about Justin Waller. They have this like collective power as like a, like a cultural force. All the, all the lefties are, are completely atomized. Like Hassan is not on H3H3 side. Destiny is not on H3H3 side or Hassan. They're all like voices in the fucking void screaming and they all don't like each other and they well, all like want each other's power. Well, Destiny is just not ideologically aligned with those people. Yeah, maybe Destiny is a bad example. But like, or like Idubs, like Idubs isn't fucking, Idubs and H3H3 and like they would all fucking, they would all cut each other's legs off given the fucking opportunity. The Red Pill ideology is, um, strikes me as pretty atomized. But they're, atom- they're atomized together. They're like a force together. The le- there's, no one, there's no one on the left. Like ContraPoints and Philosophy Tube. Given any, give, give one of them a fucking inch, they would kill each other. I think they have, those two have a specific history with each other, which is to say they dated. And, what? And they... They dated? Isn't this, this, is, this might be, this is either public information or someone told me and, to, and, and told <laughs> me not to tell anybody. Tell anybody. But, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they dated and like, there was like a like, uh, philosophy tube, I think. Like they were both, uh, were they both trans asked at the to time? See, yeah, they, like philosophy tube asked to see ContraPoint's boobs or something. They're, yeah. And they were both trans. Yeah, they're both trans, and uh, ContraPoints was addicted to opium. This is all known, probably. I, I I forget that I know things that people don't know online at this point. That's crazy. Yeah. Did they actually date? Yeah. And then philosophy was like, "Let me see your." Yeah, there's like a there's a part in a ContraPoints video where ContraPoints was like, "This is so stupid." I I I guess I said we should talk about left wing drama, but this is like an example of left wing drama. Okay. Is like ContraPoints was like, "I could meet too someone, but I'm not going to." And everyone was like, oh, yeah, it's a philosophy tube. Or at least I, I thought that. But I, I might know that because I... Someone told you and told you not to tell anybody? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> no, there's no way that would... There's no way you're like one of the only people who know that. Yeah, it's probably on... You're pretty... There's far- probably rumors circulating. Let's just say I heard that from a rumor on Twitter. You've met... You haven't, you haven't met ContraPoints, have you? You've, no. You met philosophy tube. Yeah, ContraPoints was down to get interviewed, and I was in D.C. And then... I think I think she's probably... Too busy on it. Too busy. Yeah. I'd go on a date with ContraPoints. Yeah. I'd like buy her a nice dinner. <laughs> but, JJ met ContraPoints. JJ Wait, at VidCon. If he was, but like it was like a, he was like randomly selected, and like they were engaging as like fan uh, creator. <laughs> Sorry, I keep thinking of a funny shit. <laughs> um, left wing drama. Yeah, that's fucking annoying. Philosophy- See if if if, mm-hmm. if philosophy tube. Shot ContraPoints. <laughs> It'd be a lot funnier. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. 
Like grazed her, grazed her with a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a flesh wound, like four stitches. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That'd be so much funnier. I'd cover that. I'd make ten videos about that. It's the fuck was that noise? It sounded like someone was knocking. Can I I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on. Let's let's keep let's keep chatting. I'm just gonna, who, gonna check. Who yeah. the fuck knocks like that? We have a visitor. A visitor on the Horsey Theory Pod. Nope, no one's here. Oh fuck, we don't have a visitor. We're premiering uh, Gokunaru's uh, Sneeko video today at the studio. Yes, that's very exciting. I'm actually so pumped for that. That's one of the things we do here in the in the community. Is like local tubers if they want to show off a a video that they've been working really hard on to their friends. Oh, is this the cardboard boxes collapsing on themselves? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, then we can we premiere it in front of a bunch of their peers, and then we all watch together. Yeah, we have a big projector, a big screen. Yeah. Give commentary. Yeah. Do a little potluck. A little potluck? It's going to be great. I'm really excited. Physical community, where we all are talking and thinking about the same things and working towards similar goals, personally, collectively, community-wise. It's good. You know who does that? Who? Nobody, except for us. Yeah, pretty much. We're the first people to ever do it. <laughs> it. Because not a lot of people like have realized how important it is to build something like that. And not a lot of people are in a, pri- a privileged position where people are watching us and we've got good things on the future and good things on the horizon. Yeah. Not a lot of people um, would have been in my position and just been actively on the lookout. For people like you, who had a bright future ahead of you and you know now we can work together and build real community. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's what one could say. It's what life. It's what life is all about. One could indeed say that, and we'll look back on this post the cancellation and the community falling apart into ruins, and we'll be like, I don't regret anything. I don't think the, I don't think the community will fall apart. No, we have we we're, we're rock solid, rock solid. Well, a million years of CCCRU. We are rock solid. I guess yeah. We're like, will we all? In the studio, we have like a collective agreement of like being creatives first. Like we're yeah. all creatives first and foremost. Before our politics, before our opinions, before our axioms, we're creative individuals. We yeah. want to make art. We want to make things we're passionate about. Even like everybody has that as a as a as a predicate to everything they do, and yeah. that unites me. That's what I. That's when I stopped being like super political. I used to be like very. I used to think I was so political. Mm-hmm. I used to like when I was like younger, like late teens, like twenty one, twenty two. I was like, I'm a political person, politically driven, and here's my politics, here's my ideologies. And I don't actually believe those. I'm a, cr- a creative. I'm, a, oh, I'm open-minded before I'm political, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, it's so much more important to me just to be creative, just mm-hmm. to be open and like have friends. And, and that's community. the real horseshoe theory. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? I don't know. Do, 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 is there anything else you wanted to bring up? Uh, that, is, that is a good cap, though. That is horseshoe theory. That's the horseshoe theory. What's the horseshoe theory? The horseshoe theory is having, being an artist. That's another horseshoe theory is like being an artist first. And then the fact that you're all artists, you put your politics aside. And not all politics aside, you, you're like, it's informed by the politics. Yeah. But you're still, you like, we're all creatives, we're all artists. Yeah. That's like, um, that's like an important binding force in the community that we've built. Yeah. And the people that don't fit in are the people who um, can't do that. Yeah, they're they, not artists. Yeah, they're not artists. Yeah. Like, as it takes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? How is that a horseshoe, though? Uh, it's uh, in horseshoe theory, you have something in common as you get more extreme. We're all like such extreme artists, we're such extreme creatives that that supersedes, um, sort of like a petty political opinion on something. Yes, although none of us are extreme right wing, we're all like gradients of left or like center right, not yet. We're going to get Lauren Southern on the pod, though. She's, she's, she's barely far right. Lauren Southern. What is far right now? I like just racist. I don't understand like what makes someone right. I just in my mind, if you're not like racist, then you're not really right wing. My, my Twitter feed is people uh, sometimes making the argument that like it's OK to date a second cousin um, because you're keeping the line pure. <sighs> that's a little that's a little right. That's a little right wing. I still I don't I, I can't even define the right anymore, man. I don't even know what it fucking anything is anymore. I don't even know what being left wing is anymore. The, there has been a pretty severe political realignment, which has caused us to question what is what. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't fucking know. I have no clue. It does seem like it's it does seem like the, the narrative has is, is shifted from 
you know, liberal versus conservative, cultural left versus cultural light to populist versus anti-politics, uh, anti-populist status quo versus extremist, that kind of thing. Yeah, Change like, versus stay the same. Yeah, right and left don't make any, right and left don't make any sense anymore. Like if someone like Lauren Southern can make a video about with that Gen Z girl who's like crying about her nine to five. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like I have more in common with Lauren Southern than I would like. Um, just on that, like that's such an important issue for me, mm-hmm. right? I have, I have far more in common with Lauren Southern than I do with uh, someone who doesn't care about that issue, right? At all, right? Um, I don't know. I guess it's like the, the one dimensional thing, the one dimensional polit- politics, where there's just a, like the the powerful and the powerless. Yeah, kind of like it's kind of just that at this point. It's that it, it would it will be like that for now. But as soon as there's a critical mass of people that overthrow the people in power, then there's an infighting between the coalition of the people against the people in power. That's how it happens with every revolution. And then the anarchists die. I think well, th- this is where you know you you want to talk about uh, unity, right? Right, leftist unity. Mm. It's like people that are people that I think people that are anti-immigration mm-hmm. from like a racist standpoint mm. would are very close to not being racist. Hmm. If they're like, I don't like this group of people because they are, they're fundamentally bad, right? Like very, very few people actually think that. They're more like scared of their position because their, their position in society is so, um, what's the word? It starts with a P. Precarious. Precarious, right? And it's not like they don't want to, it's not like this kind of, le- this, this, it's not like this center left narrative where it's like all all white people have all this power. They don't want to give it up to any immigrants. It's mm-hmm. like actually no, barely anybody has power mm-hmm. or barely anyone has any stability. And they're so scared of losing what little stability they have. They will become so ideologically charged to hold on to it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like people will become racist. People will become homophobic or people will become bigoted and xenophobic just to hold on to what little fucking power they have left. Mm -hmm. Just like the ability to save $500 a month. Mm. People will fucking start being racist to hold on to that. Right. No one has anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And if people realize that like, Oh wait, I'm not actually racist. I'm actually just like poor. Mm. That's what people are scared of. That's what the elites are scared of. Right. That's what they fucking know that, that, uh, that black Panther, the CIA fucking assassinated. Uh huh. Uh, the FBI killed him. Right. He was 21. Uh-huh. So it was, uh, Fred, there's a movie about him. Uh-huh. Fred something. He was 21. He was a Black Panther. Mm-hmm. And um, he started going out of the city. I, forget, I think Chicago. He started going outside of the city to white churches. Right. And going into white churches and being like, hey, we have way more in common than you'd like to think we do. We're both fucking poor. We're both subjugated. We're both like, we have nothing in life. Mm-hmm. We can work more together than you being racist. Right. And he started winning people over. Right. That's when the fucking CIA put him down. They fucking shot him in the head. He was 21 years old. Because mm-hmm. he, got, he, got, he got white rednecks on his side. Right. That's what they're fucking scared of. <laughs> the right. second everyone realizes they're poor and powerless and that's what they have in common, right. it's fucking over. Yeah. And they will not let that happen. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're articulating that, um, that one meme, which is like, this is what the establishment fears. And it's like, oh, oh, jacked white guy and a jacked black guy. Like, I got your back, brother. Yeah, because it, it is what the establishment fears, man. <laughs> It is what the fucking establishment is. They want us <laughs> hating everybody. They want us hating our fucking self. They man. don't want you to have a black racist jacked friend. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. They. No, not they. <laughs> <laughs> not they. I don't think it's a cabal. I think it's like a system. It's just a, it's a, it's a system that props itself up. It's not like individuals planning things. Uh-huh. It's a system that keeps us divided and then keeps the elites fucking atomized and together. Mm-hmm. And keeps their power secure. Hmm. Right? I think we're just, we're so close to fucking some real ideological shift that's mm-hmm. conducive to change. We're so close to it. We just have to let it happen. Right? We just have to fucking, the stop, we have to fucking delete the Twitter page clown world. <laughs> that is a, f- one, the, this is my last rant. Uh-huh. Okay, we can, end, we can actually end the podcast after this. Okay. okay. This is the mic drop. Okay. Fucking Twitter pages like clown world and fucking libs of TikTok Pearl Davis, all those people are so, there's so much more evidence for them being feds in like, in the, in the conspiracy theorist, um, in like in the conspiracy theorist thinking of like implanting things on the internet to keep us divided. There's so much more evidence for them being fucking feds, for them being psyops than there is any left wing page. Far more, far fucking more. Like clown world makes people hate each other. Like those Twitter pages where it's like, look what the immigrants are doing and look what black people are doing and look what fucking trans people are doing. Don't you hate this? It's like, no, you're all poor. You're all poor. You can't afford a fucking house. 
You're all like, you're all doomed to die from fucking medical bankruptcy in your early 40s because you can't cure your stage one cancer because it costs eight hundred thousand dollars. You have so much more in common than fucking by being poor and powerless than we do by, by fucking skin color or, or anything else. Right. Mm hmm. And then there's just this constant feedback loop that tells us that any sort of social progression is actual like decadence and society is falling apart. And there's you, you think you can so easily imagine like if you actually want to think there is a group of people planning the unraveling of the West, it's so much more likely for them to do it that way than to do it by giving hormones to 16 year olds. <laughs> so much fucking more likely. So get off that shit. If you, I'm, I'm not fucking liberal or SJW. I'm like. Probably more like just conservative, like traditional, want a family, want a house, nuclear family, go to church, love that shit, right? But it's like, how can you look at a fucking, how can you look at a 16-year-old who is like, a 16-year-old who has no community and is suicidal and is like on fucking drugs and who spends 12 hours a day indoors and is questioning their gender, and how can you look at that fucking child and think that it's somehow their fault by their own free will that they're fucked up and it's not a problem of the system at play? How can you blame that person? How can you blame? How, how can you look at a, at, a, at a group of fucking people in, 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 a, in a poor area of Baltimore smashing and grabbing a fucking clothing store and look at them and be like, oh, these people, it's their free will. It's somehow their personal fault that they did this. It is not a fault of like the system that has put them in this position. Mm -hmm. And you look at them, you blame them and you say like, we're against them. They are against us. We are fundamentally different. How can you mm -hmm. look at that and think that that's the fucking issue at play? So I'm going to make a super cut of our chat saying I'm not political and then cut to that. <laughs> I'm not political. I'm apolitical. <laughs> I have the same life path and star sign as uh, Stalin. Huh. Yeah. Young Stalin was pretty hot. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a solid seven. I'll give myself that. You comment on that. Am I a seven? <laughs> Never ask the, the random people on the internet to rate you. Yeah. Rate my, rate my facial aesthetics. I'm a... Uh, I'm 18% body fat. Yeah, do the canthal tilt uh, analysis and stuff. <laughs> Positive canthal tilt. Bottom half of my face is longer than the top half of my face. I'm six feet tall, 18% body fat. I have a 215 bench. I uh, blonde hair. I have like really nice crystal white, blue, crystal kind of green. What's the implication? Emerald here? eyes. <laughs> rate me at a 10, please, in the comments. And rate Greg at a 10 too. <laughs> and uh, then compare us. Can you do, do a compare and contrast video? Do a black pill anal analysis, compare and contrast. Of me and Greg side by side. I really think you should do that <laughs> black pill analysis of like the Beatles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like how it's over for them. They're not never going to get any pussy because they have like negative cantle tilt. Yeah. They're under like five, nine <laughs> negative cantle tilt. Yeah. And, like big foreheads. Says <laughs> 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 jaw lines. <laughs> that's actually a genius idea. You should oh definitely have to do that one. Yes. Okay. That's, that's, that's the end. And do you have anything else to add? I'm sorry. I've, I've yelled like three times. The, I think I think um, what you really have to keep in mind here is that this was filled up twice and emptied twice um, during the course of this podcast. Yeah. So. Um, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing we're doing good. I, I my whole, you know, your insecurity is like that. You're, you you were a centrist, mm -hmm. and um, now you kind of project. You try to like fight against that. Uh -huh. It's my thing is I try to say I'm not political and I like, I'm like, Oh, I'm like a, you know, just like a grew up in a small town. Just want normal things. I'm a, right. I'm a simple man. And then I scream about fucking like uh, Marxism, right? But I'm not a Marxist. I hate that shit. And I like scream about fucking uh, how the only, how class war is the only war. And I'll be like, but you know, I'm a simple, I'm a simple guy. I'm a simple guy. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So that's my insecurity is that I'm actually like probably, um, like really so like economically left wing. Right. And I don't want to be, <laughs> but it's the only thing that gets me like angry enough to like yell about. Right. And that's the real horseshoe theory.